You're listening to Popstar Conversations, taking you inside with your favorite musical artists. Today, Chuck and I are sitting here with the legendary Brian Johnson of ACDC. Brian, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for coming. First of all, I have to ask you, where, where have you been for the last eight years? Well, you, you know, it's well, it's Malcolm and Angus have been sitting in the studio. And I, I know in 2003, I went over, joined the boys for about six weeks. And I said, you know, and I sang, I tried some songs out and all that. Then I went away and I came back again for a second six weeks until we lit, literally ran out of the things we'd done. And Mal and Angus said, well, I'll tell you what, Brian, why don't you just go home? We'll give you a ring when we're ready. Because, and I said, oh, okay. And that was the last I saw of them. But I know uh, that the boys wanted something special. They really, really did. And when Malcolm and Angus make their mind up on something, they are stubborn. And they will not stop until they get what they want. They are the two stubborn guys uh, when it comes to perfection, not anything else. And, um, and the pair of them are different. And the, like Angus will bring a riff to the studio. And he'll say, you know... Malcolm, I got this riff. It, it's okay, uh, but I'm not sure. And Malcolm, I listened to it and say, "That's fucking brilliant. That's great." And Angus, can you think so? So, <laughs> so that's the way they work. They're brothers, you know. And, um, and but when we got to the studio, I think uh, we realised it was well worth waiting for because the riffs were just, you know, magnetic. You know, you you couldn't not bang your head to it and do whatever you know you must have had a lot of free time on your hands well i learned how to do crosswords <laughs> uh i won the, uh, the four hours of sebring in my race car i learned how to become a really fast racing driver so i did some good things you know <laughs> <clears throat> uh, and uh, what else did i learn <laughs> patience <laughs> that's what i did can you tell us about the movie you executive produced, uh, Totally Baked? Oh, it's funny. It's funny. Okay. Isn't it a documentary? It's a potumentary. <laughs> a potumentary. How did you come up with that? Well, it wasn't me. A friend of mine, um, Craig Shoemaker, uh, who was making the movie, but this is the honest truth. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Uh, he ran out of money. <laughs> And he said, Brian, it's Craig here. He said, to be quite honest, I'm fucked. I've just been divorced. The wife's taken all her money. Uh, uh, I can't afford any songs to put on the movie because you have to pay for them. And I said, well, what do you want? He said, could you write some? I went, oh, fuck, yeah, sure. I said, so what do you mean, write some? He said, I'll send you the movie and see if you can hear them. So I said, listen, Craig, I'll do what I can. So I called Cliff. Because Cliff just lives about 90 miles down the road. And I said, Cliff, do you fancy writing a couple of songs? He said, I've never written a song with you. I went, I said, you've never written a song, Cliff. And he went, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I went down there, and me and Cliff sat in the studio, and we wrote the Chain Gang, a song called Chain Gang on the Road, and a song called Who Found the Law. And we wrote another one as well, and uh, which was good as well. And... Blood Alley, it was called. And uh, we sent them out there, and the guy said, oh, this is great, because uh, they're very funny songs, you know, especially Who Found the Law. I'll let you have a listen to them one day. And, um, and, so, and, and then he said, Brian, um, that's brilliant, but I'm still 25 grand short <laughs> of doing the, you know, the credits at the end of the movie. We can't afford to do them. And I went, oh, Jesus. So I loaned him the money, and then the next thing I know, on the back of the thing, I'm an executive producer. I, said, I don't even know what an executive producer does. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, uh, but it was a funny movie, and uh, he still hasn't paid his back yet, but never mind. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. Brian, weren't you also involved in the stage production of Helen of Troy? Well, they're working on that now in London, so I've got my fingers crossed for that. That's a, I'm very proud of that, but, uh, you know, it's a... It's a tough market to get into that that uh, thing, you know. But uh, it they're working on it now, and hopefully we can get something going on that because it's a big production. It's orchestral, though. 
so it's, it's a big orchestra so you know it's got nothing to do with rock and roll it was just something i wanted to do you know something different just to see if i could do it really <laughs> that's all, a bit like a crossword <laughs> on top of everything else you're racing vintage cars i, I race a royal rp4 which is a 71 racer and um uh, uh, but now I'm into the uh, the big cars, the the Le Mans cars, and uh, I just uh, I just got myself a, a Pillbeam WSC3 car, which is uh, which is uh, it's like uh, you know the Audi at Le Mans and all, it's same shape and everything. And uh, I just, as I say, I just raced at Sebring, and I was so excited. I came third overall, but first in class, and uh, it was just the proudest moment you know stand on the podium with a champagne and guy yeah uh, and this german guy was standing next to me he was a porsche driver and he went you are you are i i, I know I, I, but i am not sure you 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 are singing with acdc and i said well yes i am and he went, but this is not possible i am a professional <laughs> and you are chasing me he came second and i went well you know and he went this is he says, how old are you? And I said, I'm 60. And he went, you are 60? And you are chasing me? And, and then he was, he, he was a lovely man. I forgot his name. And he just said, before you go, I must have your autograph. I said, yeah, sure. For my mother. <laughs> he was joking. You know, it was a good thing. But I was very proud that uh, this man appreciated the fact that I was a good racer to me that's important i don't want anybody to think that just because i have the money to buy a fast car that's why i started in the small cars i wanted to earn the respect of the other race drivers without going in there with big flashy crew and the trailers and the big car and people going you know there he goes so i wanted to start right at the bottom and i did with a lotus cortina mark one you remember them 1963 and i had so much fun in that car and two wheels hey around the corners fantastic don't get me started about racing i get all excited <laughs> i love it getting back to the album why did you call it black ice no black ice was always i know when i was talking to malin ang we were talking about this title and all that and i and i just and, and it, 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 it was basically i remember when i was a boy and i had my motorcycle and I was had to go to work and on the radio in the morning. There was only radios then, folks. Uh, it's uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, today the weather is very cold outside. And be, please be careful of black ice on the roads. Uh, and black ice was dangerous and it couldn't be seen. And that was the whole thing about it. It was this mythical ice that you couldn't see that could fucking kill you. It could kill you. And many a time I used to end up with a motorcycle on top of us, just sitting going, oh, 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 oh. Are you all right? Are you all right? Black ice. Oh. <laughs> and they would help us out of it. And basically, we, ne and we never forgot it. It was just one of them things that hit the northeast of England and Scotland. Nasty shit. Nasty shit it was. This album, it reminds me a lot of the classic ACDC albums. Is that what you were looking for? Uh, uh, you know, you never look for anything. But yes, you're right. It, uh, I think... It, the, I think the thing you're thinking of, and which it's it hit me, is the spontaneity of it all, the freshness, the uh, it, it's. It, when I first heard it, I had bumps on my arms uh, because I thought it was me 25 years ago. I thought I, I went, holy sh shit! Uh, uh, it was it was it was spooky. I thought I was listening to myself when I was a young man. And, and, and I can only put that down to Brendan O'Brien. When we started the album, he said to me, he said, Brian, you don't like studios, do you? I said, I hate studios. I fucking hate it. He said, what don't you like about it? I said, I don't like about it the way it's so formal, or that when you stand there as a singer, and there's a microphone there, and there's bits of wood around you and there's the headphones on you and it's one two three and sing and and and, 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 and there's nobody there and, and and it's mechanical and 
I hate it. And I, I, I'm not a great singer, but I'm a passionate singer. And that's how I do it. And, and I've got to have a mic in me hand and I, I have to be able to move, which you can't do when there's a static mic. You have to go, and, 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 and I think it's been able to tell in the last couple of albums. It's just been getting almost mechanical and I wasn't proud of it. But there's nothing I could do. And he said, hmm, let me think about this. The next day I came in and he said, we're going to sing in here. And I said, in there? I said, that's an office behind the reception desk with glass windows. He went, well, you got a problem with it? And I went, well, everybody can see us when they're coming in. He went, well, at least there's people there. And I went, okay. <laughs> so, and, and, and he said, you don't like headphones? I went, no, I don't like headphones. So he gave us this big mic, big shoe, a 56 with a big bracket on it. It was like a wit. Uh, and he had little speakers there. And that's how I sang it. I just sang it right out there. Scared the receptionist every day. Poor girl. And, oh, Jesus. And, uh, and a dog. I said a big German shepherd, which kept howling. And every time I started to say, oh, I was going, fuck. And... Uh, <laughs> Which I kind of blame him. <laughs> but that's how it happened. And I felt great because I was just singing to to, to Brendan and Bobby B uh, Bowen, who was just his little mechanical guy, you know, and, and, and a tiny little desk. And that was it. So it was spontaneous. It was live. And that was it. You know, I've noticed that the ACDC albums, they have a signature sound to them. Is that what you were going for? That's what you do. You know, why, why venture into places that you're not sure of? This is it. You know, and those people are the kind of people that are always looking for the next sound. Always looking to be hip. Always looking to say, yeah, I've discovered a new band and they're just fantastic. And uh, I'm really into them at the moment. And that's the word that gets you at the moment. The gypsies, the musical gypsies, they just go from one band to the next, whatever's hot. And so as far as I'm concerned, you know, that, that, that they have no loyalties to anyone. That's all right. Fuck them. That's called Muzak. And they can go fuck themselves. And I don't want to be in the same car as them. Let's put it that way. And, and especially if they're in charge of the fucking radio. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the next party political broadcast will be next Wednesday. <laughs> Brian, on this album, you're writing lyrics again. Yeah, no, well, you know, it's not so much I wrote the lyrics. It's, it's, it's helped with melody and just filling in gaps that I thought needed filling in. So really, that's my job. You know, I come in there, the boys come in there with the, with, with the bulk of the thing. And my job is to kick those lyrics up the ass, put in lyrics where they're needed, if, if it doesn't make sense, and, and do a melody. But basically, the job is done by Malcolm and Angus, and I think they did a fucking great job. Uh, and, and, and to understand them, uh, you, you, uh, sometimes you have to, uh, uh, to change things, and 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 and, and it's and, and I love doing that because it's it's a crossword puzzle. Again, I'm get keep getting back to crossword puzzles. And you still use that classic rock vocabulary. Well, one line I'm very very proud of is uh, on Big Jack uh, when it says uh, Big Jack, Big Jack. Santa ain't the only one who's got a full sack. Uh, I'm very proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's disgusting, but that's what I'm all about, folks. <laughs> I guess you'll always be a kid at heart. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I can't help it, you know. That's the trouble. I've got to do something. Yeah, and you're really not that caught up in being a celebrity, are you? Yeah, no, I know. I, 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 I don't know what it is about this band. It's, we're just useless at being celebrities. We're absolutely... If there's one thing ACDC is useless at, it's being celebrity. We just can't do it. And if anybody did do it, the rest of the band would laugh. We're just being, what the fuck are you doing? You know, you're, you're making the band look foolish. You know, don't do that. Uh, when, I, when I race in my car, I specifically say, you know, because the announcers are saying things like that. The driver is Brian Johnson from Sarasota, Florida. That's it. 
You know, because, no, 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 it will bring the people in, more people. I, I, please don't do that because my fellow drivers would think me an asshole. They go, no, and I don't want that. Please, I just want to be a driver, and that's what I do, you know. And, uh, and, and, it's all, and that applies to all walks of life where I live in Sarasota. Everybody knows who I am, but it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, Jerry Springer lives down the street from me. And, and I see him running and he sees me running. You know, morning, Jerry. Morning, Brian. And, and, and that's fucking it. Do you think that you'll ever want to retire? Oh, yeah. I, well, I said, you know, I, I've always said, it, it, uh, before I started this album, I met Brendan O'Brien for the first time. And I said, Brendan, can I have a word with you, please? And he said, sure, Brian. What is it? I said, Brendan, would you make me a promise? And he said, what is that? I said, Brendan, if I'm not up to scratch... If I'm not up to the job, please, please tell me. I'm a big boy, though I won't cry. I'll just disappear. I'll just say goodbye to the boys and they can get somebody else in to do the job. And I really, really mean it. Because the last thing I want is to be the, um, the member in this band uh, that holds it all back. Uh, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I'm not bullshitting and I don't mean it in any sentimental way whatsoever it's the truth uh, uh be because i'm a practical man i don't you know it's it's like a german engineer if his father makes a piece for an engine and and and, and he's and it's getting old and it doesn't do the job like a new piece can he's not gonna say well it's me father's you know he'll get the new piece in to make that engine efficient and it's the same with me and music if if i'm gonna be the part that's weak I don't want to be that part. I'll go and just retire and have a bit of fun. I'll sing other songs. I'll sing something, you know, jazzy or bluesy, you know, which I enjoy very much as well. And uh, so, and, 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 he, and he looked at me and he went, okay. Uh, and, it, and he never said anything, so I was very lucky. <laughs> and, uh, so I enjoyed, enjoyed singing on and, and the album, you know. Brian, the band has a, a long-term contract with Columbia Records. Is there a problem with the label, with the band, if it takes you guys eight years to do a record? Well, I, I, well, <laughs> it's, oh, well no, obviously for me, you know, I'd love to say more, but at, at 61 coming up, and I have, to, I have to prove to myself that I can do two hours on stage, uh, you know, I have to prove to myself that's the next hurdle. If I go out and november and if after a week, I'm, I'm sure the first two or three nights it's going to be hard and it's going to hurt and i've been working out to try to keep fit for that but excuse me if 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 i can't do it well then i won't i'll just say once again i'm going to be the weak link in the band i'm sure there's a younger singer out there that can do the job because there's always somebody there's always somebody that can do your job. You're never the only one in the world, believe you me. Maybe apart from Tiger Woods and Michael Schumacher and Lewis Hamilton or Kerr, right? They are special, but there's always somebody right on his ass. Sebastian Vettel just proved that this week. So, um, you know, it's, uh, so that's my next hurdle. I'm looking forward to it and I'm not afraid of it. I, I, I want to know because I, I, want, I want to know if I'm going to be, you know, there for a year. But after that, to answer the rest of your question, I don't know. If they said, listen, would like another album, this has been so fabulous, Brian, would you do another album and another tour? I might have to say no. But physically, I can't. I would love to. God, you know, I'd love to go out again. But if I can't, I can't. And that's the unfortunate thing about being a human being. You get fucking old. <laughs> it's just one of them things, you know. Brian, one last question before we go. What are your thoughts on where technology is taking music? Uh, I think, first of all, the digital music thing is an important thing to us, especially iTunes. It's become a monster. Now, Monster, it's like, you know, the old uh, 1984, you know, the movie, Night George Orwell, you know, Big Brother. I'll tell you what to listen to. No, but I'd like to hear Paul Butterfield's blues band. We don't have that because nobody asks for it except you. You know, but can I, can I download it? No, not until we tell you you can, which could be next year. Whereas if you had a little music store on the corner like you used to have, 
I'll order it for you. I'll get it for you. Um, we're the only band left in the world now that hasn't signed iTunes. And uh, I'm not proud of it and I'm not ashamed of it. I, 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 it's, to me, it's a fact that uh, we want to uh, keep the fans in charge. We, 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 we want people to buy a record. To, a physical thing, not a number on a fucking download, uh, which is what it's turning into. It's, you know, it, it's people getting, now you can just buy one or two songs off an album. All right, if an album shit, you know, that's all right, you save you. But sometimes a band exists on an album. Nobody goes in to do a bad song. Sometimes it just turns out like that or whatever. But we believe people should listen to a band if they're going to buy an album. And there's, there's pros and cons on both sides. I know that. But we're bringing this album out. I think it's the cheapest album out there. It's got 15 songs on it. And in the States, it's selling for 11 90 which is like seven euros, something like that. And so it's cheaper than iTunes. It's cheaper. I mean, so swivel on this iTunes. I'm not saying there's anything against iTunes, but they've become a monster. And that's what they are. And that frightens me. You know, it, they could become dictatorial if they wanted to, you know. Uh, you know, Germany can only have these songs because they were, they were very popular for the last five years. And these, these songs over here, that's Italian. You know, uh, Zucchero, say, for instance. You can't buy that in England. Well, why not? I'm a Zucchero fan. Well, it's not worth it. You know, I mean, I know I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm being extreme here, but it shit happens, you know, and it's great to be independent, isn't it? Just to be saying, fuck you. It's always good to stick a finger up to the big boys and just say, no, you can't touch us. I know you're strong. You can't touch us. That's why when we go on tour, we use the small promoters or the promoters that were with us from the very early days who give us a chance. Now you have these big corporations, huge big corporations. I just say, I remember last tour we did, and he said, if you don't tour with us, you'll never tour. And we said, fuck you. And we went with all the other ones, and we did tour, and it was a sellout. This time, they're coming, please, would you, uh, would you come with us, please? And we said, fuck off, again. Brian, it's been an incredible pleasure. Thank you very much Thanks for coming so on much the show. Thanks so much for brilliant. Thank you again for listening to Pop Star Conversations. Be sure to click the subscribe button below and hit the red bell so that you'll be notified of our next exclusive interview. Thank you again for listening. Thank you for listening to Pop Star Conversations. Please join us again for another conversation with your favorite musical artist.